for joining us today. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of Premier Jason Kenney and my government colleagues. It has been a challenging time for our province, but I'm glad to see so many Albertans coming together to support one another and help deal with the new circumstances that we are in. Alberta's government is looking to the future. What we need to do differently and practices and good work we need to continue in order to protect Albertans and help us recover from these challenges. This is why Bruce Reith from the Hope Mission and Stephen Wiley from Mustard Seed have joined me today to announce additional resources to support Albertans experiencing homelessness during the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the beginning of this crisis, our top priority has always been to stop the spread and to protect public health. This is why my department, municipalities and countless community organizations from across the province have been working diligently to help ensure the health and well-being of vulnerable Albertans, particularly those who are struggling with homelessness. At the beginning of this crisis, Alberta's government acted quickly to announce $25 million in emergency funding for homeless shelters and for community organizations. This critical support helped shelter operators to open isolation and care spaces, comply with public health orders for physical distancing, obtain PPE, adjust their service delivery, and ensure COVID-19 cleaning protocols could be met. Within days, shelter operators had activated an additional 14 shelter locations in Edmonton, Calgary, Red Deer, Lethbridge, Grand Prairie, Lac La Biche, Lloyd Minster, and Drayton Valley, ensuring people who needed emergency shelter had a safe place to stay. This funding was also critical to opening eight isolation and care centres, making sure people who got sick and needed to safely self-isolate were able to do so. I am very thankful to our partners who worked tirelessly to provide these vital resources to Albertans in need. However, we need to keep in mind what Dr. Hinshaw has repeatedly said. COVID-19 is still with us. And it is likely that it will be with us for many months to come. This means we must continue to take measures to protect ourselves and those around us. Our vulnerable populations are particularly high at risk. We must do everything we can to continue ensuring that they are protected. Today, I am announcing that Alberta's government is providing an additional $48 million in emergency funding to homeless shelters and community organizations. This critical financial support will help ensure the important work of our partners can continue. This means isolation and care centres will continue to operate through winter and into next spring making sure individuals with no fixed address can self-isolate if they are sick or waiting for test results and can receive medical care if they need it. Homeless shelters who are on the front line, making sure people have safe places to stay, will continue to be able to operate expanded shelter spaces while ensuring physical distancing requirements can be met. These organizations have been dedicated to providing everyone a warm, welcoming place to sleep where they have access to vital supports and services throughout the day and night. We are confident that with this funding, shelters will be able to continue providing the compassionate care that all Albertans deserve. As we continue our plan to reopen and restart our province, we are committed to protecting vulnerable Albertans. We will continue to work with and support our trusted partners in civil society, by working together, we will overcome any challenges that come our way. I want to thank all the shelter workers and the frontline workers for their commitment and their dedication to helping those in need. To all frontline workers, I want to say to you that while many of us were sheltering in place, you were on the front line, making sure individuals with nowhere to go were protected and had a safe place to stay. For that, I offer a profound and heartfelt thank you. I'd now like to turn it over to Bruce Reith from the Hope Mission to say a few words.
Well, good morning. Uh, it's nice to uh, see uh, Minister Sani again and, and Stephen from Mustard Seed. Um, for the first time in Hope Mission's 91-year history, we've had to adapt to caring for people uh, within a pandemic. And this meant finding new ways to serve our community while also taking extra measures to keep our vulnerable population safe. Throughout the last several months, we, like all Albertans, have experienced a lot of uncertainty, but have continued to focus on providing meals and shelter for everyone who comes to our doors. But right from the start uh, of this pandemic, Community and Social Services has come alongside Hope Mission to support us and the people we serve by providing additional shelter funding. This funding was critical in supporting extra staffing um, at our main building and two new temporary shelters that we opened up, allowing our guests to maintain safe uh, physical distancing while seeking shelter. So we're grateful for all the support that we have received from the government to help us uh, care for people in need. And I'm pleased that the government is stepping up again to provide additional uh, financial help today. So even with all the uncertainty we're living through, our guests can count on healthy daily meals and safe 24-7 shelter. On behalf of Hope Mission, I wish to thank the Alberta government for their continued commitment to helping us feed and shelter um, our city's most vulnerable. So thank you. Thank you, Bruce, for your kind words. I would now like to invite Mr. Stephen Wiley, who is the CEO of the Mustard Seed, to say a few words. Good morning. It's my pleasure to represent the Mustard Seed this morning. For over 35 years, the Mustard Seed has been a safe haven, a place of help and hope for those experiencing homelessness and extreme poverty. Earlier this year, we were faced with an unprecedented challenge brought forth by the pandemic. Although in the beginning, we started off with great uncertainty, our communities rallied together like never before to ensure that those experiencing homelessness would be taken care of during this unprecedented and unpredictable time. In the first few months of the pandemic, additional government funding helped provide safe shelter spaces. These are also provided physical distancing in these shelters. At the Mustard Seed, uh, shelters in Calgary, Edmonton, and Red Deer, 601 people have a safe place to sleep every night during this pandemic. The government funded uh, a 12 unit isolation unit uh, for a safe environment for our clients while they waited for uh, swab results. They also provided to our homeless clients during the day and supported day programming as well as day sleep facilities. In addition, we received PPE, mask, gloves, not just so our clients would be safe, but so our staff would be safe as well. This pandemic will continue to affect those experiencing homelessness for a long time to come. We need to work together to make sure they are protected, have access to safe emergency shelter and isolation spaces. I'm so appreciative of the government working diligently to ensure this critical support continues for those in need, as well as a responsiveness they have shown that provided certainty for all of us in a very uncertain time. Thank you for your time and support as we continue to help those in our community who are experiencing homelessness and extreme poverty. Thank you, uh, Ted Bauer here, Acting Press Secretary for Community and Social Services. We're now uh, gonna turn over to our friends in the media. We do have a number of media on the line, so I'd ask you uh, to limit uh, one question and one follow-up. 
And if you can just ask uh, you to uh, identify whether you'd like to speak to the minister or Bruce from the Hope Mission or Stephen from the Mustard Seed, please. Uh, operator, can we please go to the first question? Thank you very much. The first question is from Janet French of CBC Edmonton. Janet, your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi there. Thanks so much. My question is for the minister, uh, and it's about the Rosecrest facility. So parents and guardians of residents at Rosecrest say that you and your ministry are not being as transparent as they would like about some of the potential changes to the service delivery model there. And you, apparently you've said that no, change, no decisions have been made, um, but the province has issued a request for information to see who's interested in running those services. So I'm wondering why have you not included them in the process beyond a short survey? And why are you pushing forward with a plan that could potentially disrupt care for medically fragile people uh, during a pandemic? Okay, thank you for that question, Janet. And I'm actually very glad that you did ask that. I'm going to start off by saying that I had the opportunity to visit the Rosecrest Center and I was able to meet the very medically fragile and beautiful and highly vulnerable children that are there, as well as the staff. So I'm very grateful that I had that opportunity to have that first-hand visit. I also will go back to what I've said before, that we are in a consultation phase right now. I had mentioned several times, even within estimates, that every single program within my ministry would be under review, and that includes the direct operations piece. So right now, we are merely consulting with the AUPE, and we did send out a survey to parents and guardians, and I've also been very um, open about the fact that I'm very happy and pleased to meet with parents and guardians as well to discuss this situation further. In regards to the request for more information, again, we are simply exploring at this point and gathering all data and information to help inform us as to what potential next steps could be. Janet, you want to follow up? I do, totally unrelated. Um, I just wanted to hear from Stephen or Bruce. What what would you say, you know, even with the additional support, like what has been the biggest challenge of just meeting the needs of people who are homeless during this pandemic? Would you? Okay. Certainly there are a number of significant needs. Uh, in meeting in, in meeting the needs of uh, our homeless population, uh, you know, I, I certainly think one of the major ones is that, you know, the popula population we serve has a, uh, you know, a more significant uh, um, medical uh, urgency in the sense that um, many of them have, you know, numbers of uh, physical problems, and so to protect them uh, and to protect everyone. Is, uh, has been the challenge. The other major challenge, of course, is uh, trying to manage staff during a pandemic. Because if someone comes to work with a cold or a sniffle, then they automatically have to go home. And then the rest of the team either has to uh, pick up the slack or uh, we have to call in uh, other individuals to, uh, to meet those needs. So uh, for if this, if this pandemic was two weeks long, that wouldn't be a problem. But when it's many months long, we see uh, many of our staff in and out of their building and waiting in for, for, for tests and swabs in order to uh, determine whether or not they can come back to work. Thank you. Uh, operator, can we go to the second question, please? Yes, thank you. Michelle Belfontaine, CBC. Oh, uh, hi there, Minister. Uh, it's a question for you. I just wanted to follow up on the Rosecrest question that my colleague asked. Um, so you said that you've, you've been meeting with parents, and um, they basically met with you for 20 minutes after Marie Renault brought them to the legislature. And also, AUP says that the 90-day consultation, which started in June, they have not been given the information required under their collective agreement for that consultation to proceed. So again, I have to ask you, how is this transparent? Okay, well, thank you, Michelle, for those questions. I'll start with your latter question first. I can assure you that my department is engaging with the AUPE, and that conversation and that dialogue is ongoing. I'm confident in that. 
In regards to meeting parents, yes, you're right. I had met a number of uh, family members when uh, uh, Ms. Marie Renault had brought them to the legislature, and it was a good meeting. We had a good conversation. Since then, I've also had the opportunity to speak to several parents and guardians on the phone, and I'm in the process of setting up uh, one or two meetings right now. Um, certainly, as you know, we were in session up until recently, so it wasn't even possible to set up those meetings in Calgary or or in Edmonton at that time, but that is undergoing right now. I have always committed to be transparent, and in my conversations with, uh, with parents and guardians, I have told them exactly what this review is about and what is entailed, and that begins with the consultation with the AUPE. Michelle, did you have a follow-up, or did you did that answer? Yeah. Yeah, I do, I do have a follow-up. Uh, the AUPE, I spoke to the AUPE, and they say that the information that they require to have a meaningful consultation has not been shared with them at all. So how is this transparent, and how does this uh, actually meet the obligations for the government under the collective agreement? Again, I can assure you, Michelle, and anybody else who may be listening, that information has been shared with the AUPE. There is an ongoing uh, dialogue with my department staff as well as the AUPE. And uh, certainly you're hearing uh, one side of the story, but uh, I have full confidence and faith in my staff that they are engaging ethically and, uh, and appropriately. Operator, third question, please. Justin Cook, Post Media. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Question uh, for the minister, probably. I'm wondering if there are more specific details on where this funding will go announced today, specifically um, how many more shelter beds in Edmonton. There's been lots of talk here after the Expo Center uh, day drop-in site uh, shut down last week for more drop-in space. How much space will that provide here in Edmonton? Those sorts of details. Okay, great question. Thank you for that. So we don't have highly specific details as of yet, but uh, those details will be forthcoming. And I know that, I mean, we all know that the daytime supports at the Expo were discontinued uh, at the beginning of August. And I am pleased to announce that daytime supports are being offered right now, as we speak, at Hope Mission, as well as uh, the Trinity Lutheran Church, um, uh, operated by the Mustard Seed. We will be opening up additional overflow surge capacity in Edmonton, because we know that um, capacity has been reduced due to social distancing requirements. And right now, we're working with the City of Edmonton, with our community partners, and other stakeholders to secure that space. But in terms of more details around actual funding, this $48 million is for the entire province, and those details will be forthcoming soon. We're still working on some of the details. Dustin, do you have a follow-up? I do, thank you. Uh, the uh, news release says that, you know, this funding will also go for a place to self-isolate. So to be clear, does this mean that no other buildings will be looked at for isolation? I understand here in Edmonton there were talks of... Um, the Alberta government uh, getting another building to act as an isolation wing. Is that not not uh, happening anymore? No, that is happening because on August 14th, the Expo Centre will shut down completely, the isolation component of that centre. So we do need another facility and uh, as I mentioned, we're working with the City of Edmonton, with Alberta Health Services and my ministry to secure that additional space. I. We, nothing has been finalized as of yet. We're still in the process of, uh, of finding those spaces. Operator, fourth question, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Lauren Krugel, Canadian Press. Uh, hi there. This is for the Minister. Um, we know um, the Expo Centre in Edmonton and the uh, TELUS Centre in Calgary um, are, are winding down, but um, would uh, would you consider reactivating those as um, potential overflow options when the when it gets colder and there's a lot fewer people um, willing to sleep outside? 
Thank you, Lauren. Um, the Expo Center and the Calgary TELUS Convention Center were always meant to be temporary sites. We needed to stand them up very quickly in the early days of the pandemic and I'm very proud of the work that uh, the ministry, the department, the municipalities and our community partners did in making sure that those facilities were stood up in a timely fashion so I'll take this opportunity to thank them. We are looking both in Calgary and Edmonton and potentially in some of the other cities for additional shelter capacity because we know that the numbers of individuals experiencing homelessness, they will increase in the winter months. And that's why this funding ha is being announced today and that is why we're continuing this work to find those spaces to make sure that we have sufficient capacity um, in the winter months. Lauren, follow up. Um, yeah, um, you know, you, you are saying that you need more overflow capacity in the winter months. What sort of spaces are you looking at to fill that gap if not uh, convention centers? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I just realized I didn't fully answer your first question. So most likely, no, we will not reactivate uh, the TELUS Convention Center or Expo. As I mentioned, those are temporary sites. So right now, we are working with, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with, uh, with the, both cities to explore different uh, infrastructure and different spaces to make sure that it complies with all of the social distancing requirements and also to make sure that it's a safe place for individuals to shelter in. And again, some of those details will be announced as soon as we've, uh, we've finalized those spaces. Uh, due to time constraints, this fifth question will be the final one. So operator, fifth question, please. Thank you. Keith Kieran, Edmonton Journal. Hi, the question's for the Minister. Um, obviously, uh, shelter spaces are important uh, during, uh, during the pandemic, uh, but there continues to be a question about a more permanent solution around permanent supportive housing. I know that's not necessarily your department, but can you fill us in maybe on what's been the, the provincial holdup in funding permanent supportive housing projects and spaces? Okay, first of all, I, I want to say that I do agree with you that we have always had a shortage of uh, permanent supportive housing, particularly here in Edmonton. And certainly I have heard from both mayors, Mayor Iveson and Mayor Nenshi, for the need for more PSH units as well as affordable housing. And what I can tell you right now is that uh, Minister Pond, the Minister of Seniors and Housing, is undertaking a fulsome housing review and uh, she's working very closely with her federal counterpart as well to really articulate this very dire need that we have in the province of Alberta. So that, that work is underway and uh, please uh, stay tuned to hear more about that. Um, in regards to work that I'm doing, clearly there is an intersection, and you're right, isn't, it isn't really my department per se, but that intersection nonetheless does exist. And my responsibility right now is to make sure that anybody who is experiencing homelessness has a safe landing, a safe shelter to stay in during the pandemic, and that is why we're announcing this additional funding. Keith, you got a follow-up or are you good? I'm good. Thanks, Ted. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, that's, that'll be it for today. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone, for joining.